Hello everyone. So another um, review from me. So I want to review a book which um, is probably kind of one of my most, probably quite controversial really, probably one of the most controversial reviews I've done. And it's a book called The Unplugged Alpha uh, by a guy called Richard Cooper. So uh, The Unplugged Alpha by Richard Cooper. So Richard Cooper is an entrepreneur, private equity investor, high performance coach and father. And through his YouTube channel, tens of millions of men and women have benefited from his advice about life, self-care, entrepreneurship and women. Um, and the blurb on it is... Okay, so first of all, there's something about this book that I've got to say. Um, there, it's very difficult to just simply talk about this book without talking about some of the things that I can see that have come around about it. So for one thing, I became very aware that I was seeing lots of videos on YouTube uh, from men, uh, mostly white uh, males from the West, if you whatever you want to call that, uh, you know, like um, America, um, you know, uh, the Americas, uh, United Kingdom, and Europe, and uh, what they seem to be, they seem to be very, initially they seem to be quite angry, uh, they seem to be quite angry, and they were talking a lot about uh, gender relations, and um, what I began to realise is that there's this whole uh, section of the internet which is kind of uh, termed the manosphere, and basically it was about people in the West talking about the fact that they felt that gender relations had now become so imbalanced in favour of women that men had to now uh, fight literally for uh, their rights and um, their rights just to be men. Uh, now, I, find, I have to admit, I found this fascinating. I started looking at some of this stuff and I realised that there were some people who were very much at the forefront of this um, it started off with a chap uh, who wrote a book called The Rational Male, or it seemed to. Um, and then there were uh, there were even comedians that were talking about this. And then um, I saw this chap, Richard Cooper, um, who has um, uh, various videos. I, and I must admit, I've, you know, they're very interesting. So I got this book and I read it. And by the way, this also takes into... Uh, I think I count this chap called Adrian Tate, uh, who um, has actually been banned on the internet. Um, I think I'd be a bit unfairly, but you know, um, th this seems to sort of be in the same sort of ballpark. So reading this, um, where do I start? Um, essentially, it's 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 kind of like a call to arms to for for to men to be men and to put um their what he feels is their rights first and that men have been unfairly treated and and very much uh, there's this feeling that they've been unfairly treated in the west um so one it's it's about men not being uh, i mean i'll read the blurb on the back um and what he thinks he thinks that most men today are sent off in society with a broken belief system which they use to make choices that get them terrible results with life and women. Men have been conditioned to be the quintessential nice guy. They're trained to be overly humble, kind to a fault, and that just being themselves, being themselves is enough to attract the women of their dreams. Men are told to believe that conventional masculinity is toxic and to put women ahead of their own interests, passions and purpose. And he feels that this has led to an entire generation of men forming very unhealthy attachments to women that they unfortunately often make the sole focus of their lives. Uh, the playbook to women in life has changed, but most men miss the memo. Do you want to succeed and level up in every area of your life? So essentially what he's saying is, uh, you know, and there's, there's a lot sort of packed into this book, but, um, you know, one of the things, there's lots of things that he says that I see being repeated in um, on all these videos. So there's things like about men, it's about chasing excellence, not chasing women. 
uh, he talks about things that I'd never really thought about before, uh, about uh, men and female relations. And a lot of them are rooted in what is probably just basic biology. You know, men um, have a certain reproductive cycle, women have a certain reproductive cycle, and there's a point where that reproductive cycle is going to end, and there's peak times for that, and there's and that this has a big influence on the way that men and women uh, live their lives. Uh, you know, he talks about things that a lot of people, unless you've actually been sat down and thought about it, you might not realise. I mean, a lot of men often do think that they didn't get, um, you, they weren't very successful with women up to a certain stage in their lives. Um, and, what he, and what he's basically saying is, look, men take longer to mature. They take longer to gain certain assets, but at a certain point, you know, uh, but women are different. Men have to become, women just are. Um, and that, you know, that unless men realize that they have to focus on themselves and maximize what they have, that they will be um, left basically out in the cold. Now, there's lots of things in this book that he goes into, which I hadn't really, uh, which I, which now I'm realizing that, yeah, there is something to it. I, I you know, when I was growing up, um, if anybody suggested having um, a kind of marriage that was based on meeting somebody on the internet or through Lonely Hearts columns or something like that, that was kind of frowned upon. Now meeting on the internet is the primary f f way that people meet. And what he was saying is that, uh, which I mean, I, I, I've been happily married for a while, but what he's saying is that 90% of women chase 10% of men on the internet, as in on these internet dating sites. So 90% of women are going for 10% of men, and that 10% of men essentially have various characteristics. They've got to be over six foot, they've got to earn a certain amount of money, blah, 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 blah. So basically what he's saying is that those 10% of men have relations with 90% of these women. They're mostly uh, basically messing around with all these other women. And the 90% that are, are, are out there are basically left on their own. And actually what he's talking about is a lot of these women, men are left on their own and sexless, which brings me to another point that he comes up about. There's a big movement of men who are saying, I don't want anything to do with women. And they actually have an abbreviation, MGTOW, men going their own way. So they and there's a big thing about this. I didn't realize this was a thing, um, but I think what it reflects is a dissatisfaction that men have with the way gender relations are. And part of it is also things like the divorce laws. Um, they think that they're way too heavily uh, um, uh, weighed for women. Um, and he sort of goes into this. And essentially, a lot of these movements actually say, don't get married. Uh, they actually say, do not get married. It's weighed, it's so heavily weighted in favour of women uh, and men are going to be the losers here. I mean, again, there's, there's you know, I'm not saying I agree with that, uh, but I can certainly say that I can see why there does seem to be, there's this question of toxic femininity that keeps coming up, which he says that men are now reacting against and they're just asserting what they are themselves. So that's interesting. Um, there's, I mean, <laughs> there's so much out there that I've seen in the internet. Like he talks about um, things that he calls red flags, uh, which was interesting. And he says basically, you know, and the, re the reason he calls them, he calls them red flags. He says, if you see them, this and women, avoid them. Uh, and, they, and these are basically, I think, women, they're talking about uh, on the, in the same terms of the dating game. Um, and, and he's very clear about certain things. He says, look, avoid women who are single uh, and who have children. Uh, and he says things that I've not heard somebody in the West say before. Like he talks about lineage. He says, if you are going out with a single woman, you are going to be, you're going to get all the responsibility and have zero authority in other words you'll be responsible for maintenance money everything else but you will have no authority over that child and the mother will always put that child first and actually 
think of you as nothing when it comes into a conflict. And and he says that men are not thinking about these things. Kind of interesting. Um, he talks about... I mean, there's lots of things in here that he talks about. Um, uh, but I think what I think is interesting is that this is not just a book on its own. This seems to be part of this movement of men who basically, and it's mostly white uh, males in the West who are saying enough's enough that this, that the system is weighted against them, which I'd never really thought about. Um, but uh, I mean, that, that's the, that's the, that's the way they look at it. And there's things that they talk about, like, like I said, like he talks about, um, which I'd never thought about. And he calls it, there's one thing he calls, um, uh, polyandry uh which i hadn't thought about and it's basically was it was it polyandry uh i may have got that wrong um it's the idea that women will always be looking for the better deal um the bigger better deal and he, he's quite disparaging the way he says so i know people have something to say about this he talks about monkey branching, that women will basically always be on the lookout for the bigger, better deal, and that women are not... Um, and it, yeah, they, they go into some of the stereotypes about women being more emotionally driven, uh, men being more logically driven, um, and that these are things that we will ignore uh, to our peril if men don't understand those things um, and those gender differences. And they're rooted, and he believes that they're rooted in biology, um, there was an interesting thing that he talked about, which I hadn't even considered. He was saying that, you know, back in the days of old, uh, where tribes would um, uh, maraud other tribes, you know, the men would be killed, even the boys would be killed, and the women would be kind of almost taken into slavery. And women have evolved to basically deal with that. And that's what he's, so that's what he's basically saying, that's where it comes from, um, which you know how true that is i don't know uh, but he's but he's saying that men have to understand that female nature is very different from male nature and if they don't understand that and if they think they can just be themselves they say he's saying no you can't be yourselves you have to um be the best version of yourselves otherwise you'll be left on the scrap heap so the unplugged alpha oh and the reason he calls it the unplugged alpha is because that's a reference to uh, a movie called The Matrix. So this whole movement seems to be called the Red Pill Movement. And the Red Pill Movement is there's a scene in The Matrix where the guy, uh, um, uh, the, the Keanu Reeves character, is plugged into this computer program. And when he decides, the guy, Neo, uh, says to him, oh, you can either have the blue pill, stay where you are in this, you know, fool's paradise, or you can take the red pill and see reality as it is, which may be harsher and you may not even like it. And he takes the red pill. So they call, a lot of these people call themselves part of the red pill movement. And what they're saying is that um, they're basically getting back to reality. Uh, so he talks about, you know, unplugging you, the unplugged alpha. It's like unplugging yourself from this matrix, from this way of, 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 uh, gender relations that seems to have developed here in the West. Um, he, uh, yeah, so the, the, the red pill movement. And then the other interesting thing is now that there are women calling themselves part of the red pill movement who are actually advocating for a return back to uh, what they see as um, classical feminine values and being wives and women supporting men um, and basically what they're saying is that that is actually something that women are happier with. They're not happier being um, the super um, um, career-driven women because ultimately they're actually unhappy with that. A lot of people have said these kind of things anecdotally, but now there does seem to be this um, movement uh, in the West. And like I said, you know, you just have to start clicking the internet, type in Manosphere, and all this stuff will come up. But anyway, there's a lot of st interesting stuff there. The Unplugged Alpha by Richard Cooper. And by the way, I've had some interesting discussions with uh, friends already. Uh, 
even on this, uh, people that are on this uh, book club, and they've actually disagreed with me. They've, they've hated the idea that it's even called alpha, alpha males. They're saying, look, alpha males are not people that are, uh, even wolves, they, they take this term from wolves and that there's an alpha male that leads. But they're saying that, look, wolves exist in families. They don't exist as so, so loners that destroy all the other males. It's not like that. Um, so that I've had some interesting discussions already about that. And some people would say that these guys are quite bitter and angry about women and they're reacting out of that. Interesting, I'd like to see what you say, but I think it's certainly, there's a, this is not the only book of its kind out there. There are other books, but um, it's not a big read. Um, uh, I read through this quite, fairly quickly. Um, uh, the Unplugged Alpha by Richard Cooper. Uh, certainly, I think uh, a lot of discussion points in this, and I probably didn't really even go through a lot of it. There's, there's a lot better summaries of what the book's about, uh, but certainly a, a very interesting read. Okay, thanks. Uh, see you soon.